So there I was giving a speech. A man in the room is making lots of noise. I ask security to escort him out of the room. They do that. Later on, I'm resuming my speech. Same gentleman comes in again, makes lots of noise. I ask security, please escort him out. And they do. At the end of the day, I wanted to find out who this guy was who was causing such a disturbance. So I went up to him and I discovered that he actually was a relative, a cousin twice removed well joking aside and some of you are still trying to work out what the joke is joking aside is there a possibility that you watching this and me speaking to you might have a closer connections than we think my dna what does it say So I decided to have my DNA report done. Now, there's an interesting story about the discovery of DNA, and it's told by the comedian Milton Jones. He says that in a science conference, somebody stood up and said, I think I've discovered the blueprint for life. Dinner. If you're throwing things at the screen, disclaimer, it wasn't me. That's a Milton Jones joke, one of my favorite comedians. So blame him. Well, I know you are itching, you're burning to discover. First, a few questions. Question number one. What was the process? Who did you use? The test is done using a sample, a saliva sample, and I used the company 23andMe. I think this is the most obvious question. How accurate is the report? Is it just something you did on your own? Or did other family members also have theirs done? 23andMe claims to be very accurate. Now I want to acknowledge the great work that has been done by my older brother. Well, it's inevitable he's my older brother because I'm the youngest in the family. My older brother, Dr. Keith Burton who has spent decades in researching family history, looking at records. So we have a whole treasure trove of information, which helps us to understand a bit more about our genealogy. But with regard to the DNA test, several siblings have done this. Both parents have done it. I've also had cousins, uncles who've actually done this. So, there is confidence that the information is accurate because the reports show varying levels of different parts of the DNA in different family members. So where, for example, my DNA might show a little bit more in one area, another family member might have a little less in that area and vice versa. So in that way, we can actually fill in the gaps because on the report, there are bits of the report which are vague they'll just say this is a rough geographic region but we can't quite put our finger on exactly which bit and then knowing another family member's report helps to fill in the gap because they might have a little bit more or as a country might be specified on their report um, what i must say is that i will be giving information from my report that's the only report that i have any legal authorization to be giving information from i'll make broad references where information from other reports fills in the gap but even though it's my own family my siblings but these are private reports so data protection and all of that i can't be revealing things which i don't actually have authorization to do so it'll just be from my report beyond just wanting to know your family history were there any other reasons you wanted to do this well there's interesting reasons beyond just wanting to know history there are two things I'm going to pick up on. One's psychological and the second is social. So being a conductor and a composer, the way my mind works is I like to discover new things. That's what I've got to do as a conductor. I've got to look at scores and find 
relationships and see if this bit is derived from something that's come before so i love that that's how my mind works so family history exploring discovering new things new parts of the family tree that absolutely excites me because that's how my brain works i like to know how things work what goes on behind the scenes what goes on in the in the engine i i love that that's why i like things like etymology seeing where words come from and being excited about discovering new things so that's a psychological reason i think i want to do it as well as the obvious reasons of finding out history finding out who i am but secondly the social reason is because we've been talking a lot over the past year and even more recently we've seen the ugliness of racism rear its head again here in the united kingdom where i live then i think discovering your dna your genetic makeup and seeing the fact that we are actually interconnected but having something tangible to show that interconnectedness as human beings really helps in the general discourse the general conversation we're having about we being one it's all about hating hate and loving love so that's what i want to do through this just to encourage dialogue and encourage us to think in different ways about actually how we are a lot more closely connected than sometimes we realize did your report show up anything that surprised you well they do warn you when you do dna testing that you might discover things which might surprise you there were no shocks on mine but there were quite a few interesting things that i discovered well first and foremost the great thing about doing this is that it connects you with dna relatives around the world and all i can say is i've got a very big family that's why i want to make it to heaven it's the only venue large enough to host the family reunion but the dna report also shows you a few interesting things such as are you likely to have a longer fourth finger than second finger yeah you got that one correct it can also detect whether you're likely to be attracted to or to repel certain smells or tastes and yeah slightly accurate on in different aspects of that but interestingly interestingly get this everybody my report revealed that i was more likely to be able to recognize and match a musical pitch i repeat my report says that my ability to be able to match a musical pitch is in my dna that's why I like playing in the keys of D and A. Well, I must say, my DNA did not reveal whether my attempts at humour would be worthy or cringe-worthy. But I'm sure if there was something in the DNA, the cringe factor, mine would be very high indeed. Well it's that time where i unveil the dna what does it say before that a little break a short 10 second message i'll be right back wherever we go wherever we're from we are connected we are one we are one we are one My DNA. What does it say? What I was expecting to find in my report, my genealogical ancestry report, my expectation in the revelation is very much informed by the fact that I have a Jamaican heritage, my immediate ancestry is jamaican they were scattered in america and canada united kingdom and jamaica my mother was born and raised in jamaica my father 
is of Jamaican origin, but he was actually born in Cuba. He and his siblings were born in Cuba and then went to Jamaica and then parents came across to the United Kingdom. So my expectation, knowing the history of post-Columbus Jamaica, which is essentially West African and European, essentially that, then I would expect to have either West African or West African and European, or, and I've left this as a surprise moment, many don't realize that there are actually other cultures in Jamaica as well. Indian culture, so many Jamaicans have Indian DNA, Indian roots. Chinese, a number of my friends have Chinese roots. And then Middle Eastern, so Syria and uh, Lebanon. So I've got Syrian, Lebanese, Jamaican friends. And there's also a community in Jamaica, there was also a community of Germans. So it wouldn't be surprising to find German DNA, Syrian DNA, Lebanese DNA, Chinese DNA, Indian DNA, D oh, Indian DNA, that's right. <laughs> it's a bit of a tongue twister, that one. Uh, that wouldn't be a surprise to actually find, as well as the expected British DNA because of the fact that Britain controlled Spain also controlled Jamaica for a while, so that wouldn't be surprised, surprising as well. So there's so many people groups that came across Jamaica. Jamaica's motto is out of many, one people. And that's not just a lovely sound bite, but it's literal. There literally were so many different nations which make up Jamaica, that most beautiful of islands. So my expectation is definitely that I would expect to find obviously West African and then there might be some British in there, but I don't know. So let's do this. My expectation, as I said, was that I would have West African showing up and I can reveal that I am indeed Sub-Saharan African. It showed up as 88.4% on my report. Sub-Saharan African. So, is that West, East, North or South? I can next reveal that 85.9% comes out as West African. I grew up hearing that the Jamaicans were from the Ashanti people of Ghana. So my expectation, of course, naturally being of Jamaican heritage, is that it would show up Ghanaian. That's just the expectation. And indeed, 70%, 70 percent, seven zero percent. Nigerian. That's right, 70% Nigerian. So Nigeria, 70%. Now I've got lots of Nigerian friends. I have loads of Ghanaian friends who are probably thinking, oh man, we wanted to claim you. Uh, don't worry, all is not lost. There is a showing on my 23 and Me DNA report, 13.1%. However, it does say Ghana, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. So Ghanaian, Liberian, and Sierra Leone. Now, even though history, you know that Ghana was a, a big kingdom and countries and boundaries change and move across up and down the map. 70% Nigerian, 13.1% Ghanaian, Liberian, and Sierra Leone. Next on the report is a category which is one of these broad categories, so they haven't quite zoned in the exact spot, but it says broadly West African. It's come out as 2.8%. Then next, the story doesn't end there. The story doesn't end there. Next, it has Congolese and Southern East African. And in a conversation, I'm sure if my memory serves me right, in a conversation with my brother who's doing all of this, uh, I think Mozambique might be one of those Southern Eastern African countries 
So we suddenly South African and Congolese. And also what's showing up here is Angola. Angola, Congo, Southern Eastern African, Ghanaian, Liberian, Sierra Leonean, Nigerian. And that's enough of the continent we've taken over. Oh, no, no, no. Not satisfied. Not satisfied at that. There is more. Well, broadly sub-Saharan African, broadly sub-Saharan African. So that could be anywhere, East, Central, anywhere. So claiming the entire continent of Africa in my DNA. So just a advance notice, get the ingredients out, start preparing because I'm coming to get some jollof and some fufu and actually I, my DNA, I didn't show my DNA report but if it had percentage of DNA that's likely to show that I love Ghanaian yam then that would be a very 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 high showing in my DNA because I absolutely love yam and the Ghanaian that's melting but I'm making your mouth water like that melting buttery Ghanaian yam mm -mm -mm. yes okay let me move on hope you're still with me some of you now gone to your gone to your cups to start cooking but stay with me please so that is my sub-Saharan African DNA. 88.4%. So the rest of me, where? Wherever we go, wherever we're from, we are connected, we are one. We are one. We are one. My DNA. What does it say? Thanks for sticking around. So we're going to discover the rest of the DNA, which I said could be either European or Asian, Middle Eastern or a mix. I can reveal that the remaining 11.6% of my DNA, according to 23andMe, is European. We're now going to break this down. My expectation being from Jamaica would be a large showing of British DNA, British and Irish DNA. And indeed, British and Irish is here, 6.7%. 6.7% British and Irish. And some of our records, actual records, following the family genealogy, the family tree, then we've been able to track down different parts of Britain in all three countries actually scotland wales and england itself in fact we cover pretty much the entire uh, the entire great britain great britain yeah we cover right from the south from cornwall right up the country in england and right across the coast west welsh coast of uh, pembrokeshire we have family born there as well and then Scotland as well and then there's Irish so not sure how much of that is the United Kingdom part of Ireland uh, Northern Ireland or how much of that is era Southern Ireland but British and Irish is in there so if that's 6.7 percent of 11.1 percent where is the rest of me from in Europe well you might guess there's some logical guessing you can do if you think about where Britain is geographically placed and historic groups which came in to Britain from the south or from the north, from the east or from the west, then you probably won't be surprised at some of the other bits of the finding. But this is just what's in the DNA. It doesn't really say how it came to be. It could be that somebody from a particular country was 
actually happened to be living in Jamaica or Nigeria or Sierra Leone at the time. So we don't know how it came about, but we just know it's there. As I said, I cannot share specifics of other family members, not specific specifics, but broad things, broad information, which helps to fill in the gaps I, I will use here at this point. So 6.7% is British and Irish, and then showing on mine, and it's a larger percentage on some of my other um, relatives who've done this. Would you like to guess? My second name is Mark. It rhymes with my name, Ken Mark. Yes, indeed, the region of Denmark, Iceland, Sweden, Norway, to so Scandinavian. My DNA is partially, my family DNA is partially Scandinavian. The next category says broadly Northwestern European, and because it says broadly, then I can refer to some of the other reports to fill in the gap. So other reports have greater proportions of Scandinavian. But Northwestern European is defined within the 23 and me reporting system as as south as France as West as Ireland as North as Norway and as East as Finland. So that's the broad Northwestern European region showing up in our DNA. There were some specific countries which came up in other family members which showed up uh, quite a bit and they were Germany, Bruce Scott, and France, bonjour. So France, Germany. I mentioned before that there was a community of Germans in Jamaica, so I don't know whether that's through the British route or whether it was via the the German route in Jamaica. I don't know, but it's there. French, German, broader Northwestern Europe, other countries which I can quite pinpoint, and specifically Scandinavian and British and Irish. So taking over the African continent, now taking over Europe. This is conquest. This is domination. Well, does the story end there? Well, no, because there's a little space reserved for Southern European. My wife is Spanish and the history of Jamaica being controlled by Spain and England. Also, Southeastern Africa, Mozambique and Angola under control of Portuguese or it could just be somebody from Portugal ended up working in Ghana and that's the route through which it came and shows up in my DNA well half a percent 0.5 percent and again this shows up more in some family members of Spanish and Portuguese. So within the family, Spanish and Portuguese, in addition to French and German, in addition to broadly Northwest Europe, in addition to specifically Scandinavia, in addition to British, in addition to Irish, in addition to broadly Sub-Saharan African, in addition to Angolan, Congolese, Southern, Af Afri Southern East African, broadly West African, Ghana, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Nigeria. Okay then, so a collective hug to all of you, your all family. <laughs> Dinner by me next Thursday. <clears throat> right, let me get preparing. Got a lot of shopping to do. Have a great day. a choir or choir director looking for music, check out Ken Burton's choral music on sheetmusicplus.com.
Music published by Peter's Edition. Faber Music. Vo Quality Music. From the simple to the complex. From the traditional to the contemporary. From a company to a cappella, there's music for every season. <laughs>